The next hem finish is very much like the flat catch stitch. And in fact uses the exact same stitch as we just did for the flat catch stitch. I'm going to get another one of my hem finish pattern pieces cut from muslin. Again, the internal line has been copied. It's a little hard to see on here, so I'm just going to reinforce that with my friction pen. Again, this is one and one quarter inch of hem allowance, so an inch and a quarter away from the raw edge. That's one inch and two little squares is where our hem allowance is. And I've got my notches at the top and the bottom. Oops. So just as we did for the flat catch stitch, I'm going to reinforce and clean finish this um, hem finish. Here we go, I'll turn it this way so you can see where the grain line is going. I'm going to clean finish this edge here by serging it on my serger and clipping the tail ends. And then I will take it to the ironing board again and press that hem allowance up. So there is my hem sample. I took it to my serger and serged this raw edge. Took it to the iron using my notches to indicate where my fold line is. I finger pressed it and then set it with steam. And you can see I've tucked my extra serge threads to the inside just so they're not quite as unsightly. So the blind catch stitch uses the same stitch as what we did for the flat catch stitch. It just changes the, the only thing that changes is the location of where the stitches are going. So this is another hand sewn hem finish. So I have my needle and thread with a single length of thread. One end of my thread tails is longer than the other. I'm gonna place a knot in my longer thread tail. There's my little knot. And just as we did before, I'm going to anchor my knot. Again, if you are right hand dominant, you'll be working from the left side of the sample to the right, taking your stitches right to left, traveling from left to right. If you are left hand dominant, you'll start from the right hand side of your sample, traveling right to left, taking your stitches left to right, and again traveling from right to left. Now with the flat catch stitch, let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. With the flat catch stitch, all of our stitches were one on top of the other with both the garment and the hem allowance kept flat. So just to remind you, this is what the flat catch stitch looks like. There's the hem allowance, there's the garment, everything is kept nice and flat and we stitch directly on top of these two layers. With the blind catch stitch, however, I'm going to take this surged edge of my hem allowance and turn it down towards me. I'm just going to, again, that's been pressed up, I'm just going to turn this down towards me so that I can see the other side of my hem allowance. You can see that's where it's kept nice and flat. I've just turned this edge down. I'm just going to hold it in place. You can do a little bit of a finger press if you'd like to hold that down just so it doesn't curl back up on you. And I'm going to do the exact same stitch that I did before except Instead of starting here on this side of my hem allowance, I'm going to instead start on this side of my hem allowance where I've turned this down. So let me get a little bit closer here so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to anchor my first stitch. Again, I'm going to go into this lower edge of my hem allowance, somewhere down here where my serge stitches are. I'm only picking up 
I've just gone in and out of my hem allowance. I'm only picking up my hem allowance. I'm not going through the second layer. I'm not going through my garment. Just picking up a few fibers on my hem allowance, pulling my needle through, and let my knot anchor itself there. Now again, as I did with my flat catch stitch, again I am right hand dominant, so my stitches will go from right to left, traveling from left to right. Just like with the flat catch stitch, I've anchored my, I've taken my first stitch in my hem allowance, now I'm going to move up to my garment. I'm just going to move just above this fold, and again I'm going to travel about 3 eighths of an inch. I've got my non-dominant hand underneath so I can feel when that needle comes through my garment fabric. I'm going to push in and back out, picking up about two fibers on my garment fabric. Again, my needle is going from right to left. Push that through, pull my thread through, and allow those threads to crisscross on themselves. I'm going to move again about 3 eighths of an inch over, take another stitch, my needle going right to left, and again I'm going to go through my hem allowance only, just below these stitches, my serge stitches down here. There's my needle going in and out. I've only caught this section of my hem allowance. I've not gone through this part of the hem allowance or the fabric. Just going through this little section here, right to left. Get my thread out of the way. Pull that through. And again, I allow those little threads to kind of crisscross themselves. Traveling a little bit further, going to go back into my garment fabric, just above that fold, this little fold here in and out, picking up about two fibers of my garment fabric. Push that through, just make sure my thread is out of the way. And again, allowing those threads to crisscross themselves. I'll go back down here to my hem allowance, just below my serge stitching, going in and out, Picking up a few fibers from my hem allowance. My thread out of the way. Again, there's my needle. I've not gone through this part of my hem allowance or through the garment. Just picking up this little section of my hem allowance. Pull that through. And again, those little red threads will start to crisscross themselves. Okay, and I will continue all the way across.
Let me do my last few stitches here and I'm going to, just as before, anchor my stitches in my hem allowance. So I'm going to take a few small stitches through my hem allowance fabric. I haven't picked up anything underneath, so just this little edge of my hem allowance. It's important when you do this blind catch stitch that you keep your stitches as close together as possible. Try not to take stitches down here near this raw edge because they'll come loose. This fabric will start to fray from the raw edge and then you'll lose all your stitches. Again, taking a tiny stitch from my hem allowance as that loop comes through, place my needle through that loop, pull my threads and anchor it with a little bit of a knot. And we can do the same thing as we did before. I'm going to slide my needle down in between my hem allowance and my fabric. So there is the eye of my needle over here. The uh, point of the needle is down here. You can see it's not poking out anywhere. And I'm going to travel in between these two layers and bring my needle up through my hem allowance, pulling that through. I'm going to tug on that. And again, I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug you can see it's got a little bit of tension under there. Snip it close to the fabric and let that thread tail just disappear back into my fabric. You will see, let me get a close up shot of this stitch so you can see my individual stitches in there. Tiny little crisscrosses up and down, up and down, all the way across. And again, if I tug on this hem allowance, it's not going anywhere. It's now attached to the garment. If I flip this over, it should look almost identical to the flat catch stitch because it's the same stitch. Teeny tiny little stitches. And again, if this was a, fabric, a color of thread that was similar to my fabric, you probably wouldn't even notice those stitches were there. Now, we've got this little surged edge of our hem allowance kind of dangling here. We wouldn't leave this like this. Someone might catch there if this was a bottom of a pair of pants or something like that, and they go to put their foot, their leg through the leg, put their leg through the leg of the pants. They might catch their toe on this little lip of fabric hanging out here. So we're going to push this all back up, hide all those stitches that we just made. I'm going to take take it to the iron and press it once more so that this is set in place. So here is my blind catch stitch from the inside of the garment and here it is from the outside of the garment. You can see the teeny tiny little stitches that are there because I used a contrasting thread. From the inside of the garment, no one would know that there was any sewing, any hand sewing going on unless they peel this back and find those tiny little stitches hiding in there. So again, it's the same stitch, the catch stitch just the placement is slightly different so it hides the catch stitches underneath the hem allowance. I'll label this again as the blind catch stitch. 